I'm at Spear America in Torrance and I'm coming here to get uh, rent a bunch of free diving equipment. I'm taking a free diving class with Lance this weekend and I'm a little bit scared because I'm terrified of the cold and there's actually a lot of equipment that you need for free diving. You need, um, well it's a hunting and free diving class so I I'm not going to rent a spear because I'm not going spear fishing. I don't know if I have it in me to do that to a fish, but I am going to go lobster hunting. And here in California, you can only legally catch the lobster with your hands. You can't use any equipment. And um, I'm going to need to rent a wetsuit, boots, gloves, um, a weight belt, and um, a snorkel, I think. So let's go inside. So I ended up renting a 7 millimeter wetsuit for the cold. A warm conditioner um, so that you can slide into the suit. Pants are going to go on first. Uh, these are the knees, so those go to the, go to the front. That was crazy. I didn't know that I was going to like have to lube up the free diving suit to get inside of it. And it was not easy to get inside. I'm taking the class with Lance and he's like a US world champion record holder of free diving. I just spent $200 just on equipment alone, not counting the cost of the class. And then I have to, I just got diver's insurance, which I need anyways, cause I dive regularly. So like 80 bucks a year. And then I also need to get a spiny lobster card don't know what that's for but I need one and I need a recreational fishing license okay so to free dive you need to be able to equalize differently when than when you're scuba diving when you're scuba diving you just hold your nose and then blow out your ears you have to keep equalizing your ears because the water pressure I don't know the exact science to it but the water pressure like I guess presses down on your eardrums or something and if you don't equalize your ears you can break or pop your eardrums or something. Anyways, you have to equalize. But when you're free diving, I think you go down way faster than when you're scuba diving. So you're not able to like blow out your ears. You have to use this other technique that I have to practice for the next couple of days and hopefully I can figure it out before class. I finished the first two days of class. So the first day was, I think it was like four hours of instructional um, learning and then um, we did pool. So we went into the pool, we got on all our gear, wetsuits or fins, and got our pool training in and just practiced. Um, we practiced like emergency exercises for if somebody blacks out, because blackouts are fairly common in free diving. Also we did static, um, static breathing or static breath holds. I was able to hold my breath two minutes and 45 seconds. And you know, I've never held my breath longer for 30 seconds before. And it's all really mental. I still was not able to figure my equalization out. It's called a frenzel. So I wasn't really able to do any depth, but I did pass my pool certification for free diving. Second day of class was some more classroom and then we went out into the ocean to do some line diving. So basically we met at the beach, which I think was Redondo Beach, and then we swam out to the instructor's boat and he had a line down and we were just testing. Um, I think you pass the ocean certification, you have to get to like 30 feet or something. Couldn't do it, it was really sad because I haven't figured out this equalization thing. So I'm gonna work on that some more. Also do a little bit of foraging and lobster hunting, so that should be fun. So I'm at the Redondo Pier today. We're going lobster hunting. We're actually gonna take a boat out to Palace Verde. And I got my little lobster flashlight because lobsters are best hunted in the dark. So we're gonna go free diving in the night. And we're at the pier. So here's a little boat we went out on. It only fits about three people. And from the Redondo Beach Pier, it was about like a 30 minute ride out to the point which we dove at, which I think was called 
Neptune's Cove in Palos Verdes. So Lance dove down to forage for some fresh seafood for us to enjoy. And it wasn't very long before he came up with some delicious goodies. Some, one of the mussels. Mm. Um. So this mussel is massive. Big. Yeah, the shell, so like... Is that the scallop? Yes, this is the scallop. It's huge. I get the knife in, and then I want to slide it. I should turn it this way. So that's the... Whoa! That's amazing. And then... We're not European, so we don't need guts. Okay, but this is the most delicious scallop I've ever had. Uni is also super easy to find. This oh one is probably. God. It might be an okay uni because it's currently feeding. Sounds like there's like kelp on the mouth. Whoa. Uh, <laughs> Do you like uni? Yes. Here. This is so amazing. But yeah, I mean, this is all over. It's like. This. Then I passed the island of 10 seals who swam with me. <laughs> we caught a lobster. But we caught a bunch of scallops and mussels and a spiny lobster. Bug. He's a cute guy. So cute. So sad. So we caught one lobster. Free diving is so hard, by the way. I'm not gonna lie, it's so hard and I need so much practice and I'm not good at it. But we did catch a lobster. The teacher lambs caught a lobster. Let's not joke around, I didn't catch any lobster. Um, and then five scallops. The scallops are the best scallops that I've ever had in my life. They taste nothing like the scallops that you get in stores. And um, yeah, California, have some of the most amazing seafood that you can just grab from the ocean. <laughs>